Hi, it's Scott Vogel on Sex Addiction, and in this video I'm going to share with you using the 12 steps in recovery from sex addiction. The 12 step programs are designed to open the addict to a new life, a spiritual transformation that will lead to a life free from their sexually obsessive compulsive behaviors and a life free from sex addiction. It's often said in the rooms of 12 steps there's only one thing a person has to change and that's everything. In working the 12 steps one will look at their entire lives and see what they need to change so that they can live this spiritual transformation. Often people ask which S fellowship should a sex addict choose? The three most common 12-step programs for recovery from sex addiction are SA which is Sexaholics Anonymous. Sexaholics Anonymous talks about lust and being in a monogamous relationship. And they are a group of men and women who share their experience, strength, and hopes with each other that they may solve their common problems and help others to recover. Their primary purpose is to stay sexually sober and help others achieve sexual sobriety. In SAA, Sex Addicts Anonymous, it's a fellowship of recovering addicts who offer a message of hope to anyone who suffers from sex addiction. In SAA, they define what are called inner circles, behaviors which the addict chooses not to engage in any longer. And in SLAA, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, it's a group of men and women who help each other to stay sober. And they offer help to anyone who has a sex addiction or love addiction or both and wants to do something about it. In SLAA, one defines what's called a bottom line, those obsessive compulsive sexual behaviors they no longer wish to engage in. So, what are the 12 steps? Step one, we admitted we were powerless over. Now in SA, we admitted we were powerless over lust. In SAA, we admitted we were powerless over addictive sexual behavior. And in SLAA, we admitted we were powerless over sex and love addiction, that our lives had become unmanageable. Basically, in this step, powerlessness means we cannot control our sexual addiction, our sexual problems. And by doing so, acting out in these behaviors, our lives had become unmanageable in many ways. We become honest, and we work step one. In step two, we begin to believe that there is a power greater than ourselves that could restore us to sanity. We choose that power, whether it's God, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, Allah, the great universe, Mother Spirit, Mother Earth, anything that we choose that's greater than us that could help restore us to sanity. Because when our lives were powerless and unmanageable, we probably weren't very sane. We choose a sponsor, we choose the group, we choose the fellowship as our higher power. But we start to realize that we can't do it by ourselves anymore. In step three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. This is the God of our understanding that we define in step two. And now we decide that we don't have to drive the bus, so to speak. We don't have to direct the whole entire show that we're willing, and this is willing, to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God. In step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And here we see moral, right and wrong. It takes a lot of courage to look at ourselves, to look at our entire lives and everything we've done, who we may have harmed, what defects of character we now have that we no longer want. And then in step five, we admit to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Once we've determined in step four what we've done wrong and to whom we've done it to, then we share with somebody else exactly what we've done. It's a very freeing experience and helps us to move on with our recovery process. And in step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Remember here, we're ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Not necessarily going to be removed. We're just ready now because we've defined what they are in four. We've told somebody about them in five. 
And now we're ready to have them removed from our lives because they no longer serve us. In step seven, we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. Humility, asking for help. We now learn in life that we can ask for help and we can ask God of our understanding to help us remove these shortcomings that we no longer need in our lives. In step eight, we make a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Unconditional love is what this step is all about. We make a list of people we had harmed. Even if we don't think we harmed them, we put them on our list. And this is just about making the list. Because in step nine, we made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. This step is about justice, discipline, evening of the scales. It's time to make right what we've done wrong. And with the help of our sponsor or a guide, we make the amends to these people, sometimes in person, sometimes on the phone, sometimes in writing, and sometimes where we may harm that person more, we just make that amend in written form and we don't even do it to that person. We don't want to harm anyone. This is about us. This is about cleaning up our side of the street and making things right. In step 10, we continue to take personal inventory and when we are wrong, promptly admitted it. Now that we've learned to make amends, each day we look at our lives at the end of the day and say, what have I done today that maybe I should have made an amends for? And we promptly admitted it. It helps to better living. In step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood God, praying only for knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry that out. For many people, prayer asking, meditation, listening is new. It's something that needs to be learned and as we work the steps we learn to pray. We learn to meditate so that we can be in better communication with God again as we understood God. And we only want to know what is God's will for us, not our will for ourselves and how do we do God's work in this world. And in step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to other, in SA it's sexaholics, in SAA it's sex addicts, and in SLA it's sex and love addicts, and to practice these principles in all areas of our lives. So now this is about service. After we've worked the steps, after we've reworked our lives and living a better life, now we've had a spiritual awakening. And now we want to carry this message to others. We want to give what was given to us freely. And we practice the principles we learned in all areas of our lives. This is recovery from sex addiction. And a quick review of the 12 steps. We admitted we were powerless over addictive sexual behavior that our lives had become unmanageable. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs, were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, humbly asked God to remove our shortcomings, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others, continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood God, praying only for knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry that out. And step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to other sex addicts, and to practice these principles in all areas of our lives. For more information about sex addiction and recovery from sex addiction, visit our YouTube channel on sex addiction. For more videos on sex addiction and recovery from sex addiction, go to www.onsexaddiction.com. For a free video explaining sex addiction and more information about sex addiction and sex addiction recovery. Again, www.onsexaddiction.com